أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفر ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله My beloved brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to have witnessed this blessed month of Ramadan we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our fasting and our ibadat and that he rewards us uh, in multiples for our ibadat and all of our good deeds. Indeed, this month is very different than any other Ramadan that we have experienced in the past. And we know that here at Masjid al-Sadiq, we normally have our Qiyam al on Saturday nights uh, where we pray together we uh, uh, embrace each other, we have conversations, and we enjoin each other to do good deeds. We have various guest speakers that help us uh, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remind us for some of the key things that we can do to achieve the most out of this beautiful month of Ramadan and ensure that we can put it into practice after the month of Ramadan. Unfortunately, as the masjid is closed, we can't do that this night. And so we're having the next best thing. We're glad that you're able to join us tonight on this session. And we're excited to also have with us uh, someone who is no stranger, stranger to us at Masjid as siddiq and that is uh, our Sheikh Nazim Habibullah. Sheikh Nazim tonight will be talking to us about the power of our dua. And uh, inshallah, we will all be able to reap some of the words of wisdom from our dear brother. So with that, I'll hand it off to Sheikh Nazim. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa ba'd. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify him. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his acceptance. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our du'as, to accept our salah, and to accept all our good deeds in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all that is harmful, from all that is evil. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all sickness. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who have returned to him to, to grant them light in their graves, to have mercy upon them and to forgive them and to grant them gentle to their doubts. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. One of the most powerful tools we have as Muslims, one of the most honorable and noble act in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our dua. One of the most important acts that we can engage on, not only in this month of Ramadan, not only in crisis, but throughout our lives is dua. Because dua is the most liberating and humbling experience it's the most uplifting experience and why is that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us that a dua huwa ibadah that dua is ibadah and he also told us dua mukhul ibadah that dua is the essence it's the crux, it's the backbone of your ibadah. Because dua puts us in our rightful position. Dua reminds us of who we are, that we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua reminds us of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that he is independent. And no matter who we are, we all depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua reminds us of our weakness. And that is why whenever you lift your hands and you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
is an acknowledgement of that weakness that no matter what we have in this world or who we are that we all depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are weak and we are in need and it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is free of all needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator commands us to make dua and he told us uh, that is only those who are arrogant are the ones who turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not call upon him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadat sayadkhuluna jahannam dakhirin Allah says call upon him he will answer our dua he will respond to our petition and our requests and it is only those who are arrogant and full of pride are the ones who turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when a servant call upon him and it is only through Allah's mercy it is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that ability to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah loves Allah loves when we turn to him and ask him and beg him dua my brothers and sisters it's a sign of our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you ask when you lift your hand when you prostrate and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are acknowledging of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even when you are enjoying the luxury of this dunya even at times of ease you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you acknowledge that oh Allah no matter who I am or what I have it is from you and I depend upon you so it's a sign of iman that we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only in times of need because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us those who wish for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to their request at times of need let him or her call upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times of ease so those who call upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only when they are in difficulties only when there is a crisis allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about them وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ دُرْ دَعَا رَبَّهُ مُنِيبًا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ نَسِيَ نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْعُو إِلَيْهِ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَعَدًا But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that there are some people when they are in difficulties, when they are in problems, when they are in pain, when they are in need, they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them relief they turn away they get and they forget they turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not my brothers and sisters a sign of true iman a true iman is when you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you get what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you ask for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you continue to worship him you continue to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we look at the example of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam in Al-Quran when he beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah grant me a kingdom that no one will have before and after me and when he saw the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him he says hadha min fadli rabbi he says this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he did not get and turn away but he continued to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to acknowledge that whatever he is blessed with it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a test for him to see whether he will be grateful or whether he will be ungrateful so my brothers and sisters dua is our most valuable tool it's the most valuable weapon of a believer how do we my brothers and sisters make sure that we position ourselves in a way that our dua 
will be accepted? How do we guarantee that our dua will be mis will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My dear brothers and sisters, I will review some of the etiquettes, some of the manners that we need to practice in order for our du'as to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one is that we always start our du'a by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by acknowledging Allah's attribute, by recognizing that, oh Allah, you are al-Hakim, you are the most wise, you know and we don't know. Oh Allah, you are Razak. Oh Allah, you are the one who provide. I make effort, but you are the one who provide. Oh Allah, you are Qawi. You are in charge. You are most powerful. And I am not in charge. Oh Allah, you are independent and I am dependent. So we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah, you are Rahman, you are Rahim, you are most merciful, you are most gracious, you are Rabbul Alameen. And then we send salam and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to acknowledge that, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in this Rasul. We follow the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe that whatever Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with and is the way of life for us to live. So, O oh Allah, we send salam on your Rasul and we acknowledge that he is Rasulullah and we follow his sunnah. And then, my brothers and sisters, we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to call upon him with his beautiful names. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna فَدْعُوهُ bi. Allah has the most beautiful names and attributes. So call upon Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in Al-Quran, وَقُلْ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Oh Allah, forgive us. Have mercy upon us. For you are خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ That you are the ones. You are the one who provide. You are the best that provide. We call upon Allah that oh Allah, you are razaq. You are the provider, so provide for me. Oh Allah, you are ghaffar. You are the forgiving, so forgive me. There is no one else I can turn to for forgiveness. Oh Allah, you are the one who can help me. There is no one else. Oh Allah, you are Al-Hakim. That I think I know, but you know what is best for me, and I don't know. So you call upon Allah with his beautiful attributes. And then, my brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, a, with an attentive heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah does not respond to a heedless, unattentive heart. So when you make dua, be conscious, focus, and cry and beg to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because dua is not a ritual. Dua is a cry from the heart. It's a call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an act of worship. So we need to be attentive when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua is not a few Arabic phrases that we recite or we memorize and repeat. But dua is to cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beg him for his mercy and his forgiveness, for beg him for his need. There are some usefulness in those booklets or those dua books, but true genuine dua is when you come with your own language and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you want. The booklets do not know what you need, what you want, but you in your heart. You know what baggage you carry. You know the sins and the mistakes you made. You know your pain. You know your needs. So cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an attentive way, my brothers and sisters. Also, my brothers and sisters, when we make dua, we need to be humble. And we need to be sincere. 
that you are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are genuinely asking Allah, Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me, I am ashamed of what I did. Allah, I am not worthy of asking, but I'm still asking you. And you come sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at Sulaiman alayhi salam, the same example, when Allah bless him with all the things that he asked for, that he could understand the language of animals and birds, that he can control the wind, that he can control the jinns. He says, Hada min fadli rabbi. That's sincerity. That he's saying, everything I have, it's not from me. I am no one. I am not worthy. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is sincerely when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then my brothers and sisters also, we need to make sure for our du'as to be accepted, we need to ask for that which is pure. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which is pure. That which will, will take us to Jannah. Yes, you can ask for wealth. You can ask for a good job. You can ask for the things of this dunya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, if, if you need the lace of your shoe, ask for it. Big and small, ask for it. But don't forget to ask for Allah's mercy and his forgiveness and for the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ There are those who say, oh Allah, give us the dunya. And they don't ask for anything else. They only want the dunya, wealth and job and fame. And the things of this dunya, Allah says, they will have nothing in the akhirah. But then Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَّنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَّنَةً وَقِنَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ They are those who say, O oh Allah, bless us not only with the dunya, but bless us with the pure things of the dunya, hasana, the good things of the dunya, and bless us with that which is best for us in the akhirah, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. And that is what we need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. When Musa alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he ask for? What was his priority? Oh Allah, forgive me. And forgive my brother. Oh Allah, have mercy upon us. Give us your rahmah. Sulaiman, what did he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'imataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an'amala salihan tardahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin Sulaiman, he says, Oh Allah, give me the ability to thank you, to worship you for all that you have blessed me with, O oh Allah. Give me the ability to thank you for the blessing you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. And oh Allah, have mercy upon me. Ibrahim alayhi salam, what did he get Allah for? Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salah wa min dhuriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Oh Allah, give me that ability to worship you. Make me among those who always establish salah and make my offspring among those who establish salah. So let us always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which is pure and ask him most importantly for forgiveness and for mercy and to save us from the torment of the hellfire and for Jannah to fear those. My dear brothers and sisters, haram substance, haram actions, evil deeds, have a negative impact on our du'as. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that sins remove Allah's blessings upon you. When Adam Alayhi Salam, when he disobeyed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah removed his clothes. Allah removed his clothes and cause him to be embarrassed. 
my dear brothers and sisters, when you are concerned about the way you earn your living, that it is always halal, when you are concerned about what you eat, that it is always halal, when you're concerned about what you feed your children to make sure it is always halal, then the chances of your du'as being accepted goes up. But when you are not concerned and your clothes is haram and your earning is haram and your food is haram and your actions is haram, the Prophet wasallam told us there was a man who was a traveler and he had all the signs of someone whose dua will be accepted. He was desperate. He was in need. He was a traveler. And he was begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Anna yushtajabala. How can his dua be accepted? When his clothes is haram and his food is haram. And his actions are haram. So let us make sure that we always worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever goes into our body is halal. That our earning is halal and our, all our actions is halal. Whatever we look at is halal. Whatever we listen to is halal. And whatever comes from our tongue is also halal. Because this is the tongue you will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And you want to make sure that your tongue is not filthy. You want to make sure your tongue is one that always worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is what you will ask your Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. Also, my brothers and sisters, when we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we cry to him, let us make sure we cry with desperation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in Al-Quran, when Adam and his wife Hawa, alayhim as -salam, when they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when they turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forgiveness, what did they say? Qala rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin They say, O oh Allah, we are desperate. We are ashamed of what we did. Dhalamna and Fusana, we wronged ourselves. We committed a mistake. We are not happy about it. But they were desperate. They said, Oh Allah, if you do not forgive us, we have no one else to turn to. If you do not have mercy upon us, there is nowhere else we can go. So forgive us and have mercy upon us. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was tempted, when he was being forced to commit an evil act, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in desperation. He says, Rabbana, he said, Oh Allah, if you do not, wa illa tasrif anni kaidahunna, asbu ilayhinna wa akumin al jahili. He said, Oh Allah, if you do not save me, no one else can. If you do not protect me from these evil people, no one else can. So, O oh Allah, protect me. My dear brothers and sisters, especially in the times we are living in, there is no one else we can turn to. There is nowhere else we can turn to but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to cry to Allah and say, O oh Allah, if you do not protect us from this crisis, if you do not protect us from this pandemic, if you do not save us from this trial, then no one else can. So oh Allah, save us and protect us. Also, my brothers and sisters, when we turn to Allah and we cry to him and we beg him, we need to go to Allah and acknowledge our sins and feel ashamed. Like Yunus alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al-Quran, when he was in the belly of a whale, in the depth of the ocean, when he was in quarantine, isolated, he says, Rabbana, he says, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina That's a dua of desperation. 
He says, oh Allah, la ilaha illa and there is no one except you. Oh Allah, there is no one else who can save me, who can help me, who can protect me. I am ashamed of what I have done. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have wronged myself. And this is how we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that desperation, acknowledging our sins, our mistakes, and be ashamed of it. And we reveal it, we cry, even though Allah is aware of everything. But we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Oh Allah, we regret what we have done. And we turn to you sincerely. Also, my brothers and sisters, we need to seek Allah's help through our good deeds, through our good actions. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when he was asked, when is the best time to petition Allah, to make dua, to call upon Allah? He says, in the last third of the night and after your salah. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us. Because the last third of the night is when you stand up, when everyone else is asleep. When you forsake your comfort and the warmth of your bed. And you cry and you beg Allah. After your prayer, you have just completed a good deed and you cry and you beg Allah it's because of your good deeds, you're saying, oh Allah, have mercy upon me. And you ask Allah for your needs. Look at Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as -salam. When they perform the most noble action, when they erect the foundation of the Kaaba, they say, Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samir alim. They say, oh Allah, accept this from us. Accept this good deed from us. When Prophet Musa, السلام, when he was desperate, and he helped two helpless women, he helped them. What did he do immediately after that good action, that good deed? He says, Oh Allah, inni bima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. faqir. He says, Oh Allah, I am faqir. I am in need. So oh Allah, bless me with anything. And this is how when we perform our good actions, when you give sadaqah, when you help someone, always remember to make dua with those good actions, with those good deeds. Don't look for fame. Don't look for recognition. Don't look for that I recognition that you have given this or you have done that. But turn to Allah and say, Oh Allah, I don't want mankind to recognize me, but I want, Oh Allah, for you to recognize my good deeds, my charity, my sadaqah, my salah, my dua, my qiyam. My humanitarian service, all I want you to recognize it, and all I want you to reward me for it. So seek help and seek Allah's assistance through your good deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, whenever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure that your ties of kinship is always solid. And if it is not, make an effort to resolve issues, family issues, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that your du'as will be in limbo. Your du'as will not be accepted until you mend the family relationship. So make sure that you mend your family relationship. You reach out to your brothers, to your sisters, to your relations, to your community, anyone that you have a not so healthy relationship with, and make sure that you mend relationship. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we ask Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we ask Him. And especially in this month of Ramadan, we have that opportunity to ask where we have a higher chance of our dua being accepted. And there are certain times 
They are special times, they are special moments that is more valuable for our du'as than all the time. Special moment when we have the best chance of our du'as being accepted. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the last third of the night, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calls out who is asking me so I can respond? Who is seeking my forgiveness so I can forgive? So I can forgive? Who is asking for my help and my aid and my assistance so I can respond to them? So let us make sure, and this happens every single night. So let us make sure we don't lose that opportunity where our Creator, who loves us so much, is opening and says, Come and ask so I can respond to your needs. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us after Salah and he taught us some du'as to make after our Salah. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik. Allah give me the ability to always remember you and worship you and be grateful and thankful to you. The time between the adhan and the comma. Those few seconds, especially that we are at home now, just before you pray your fart, just before the comma, use those few seconds to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get your du'as in. Get your requests in. Because those are special moments. On the day of Jummah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that there is an hour in the day of Jummah in which no one will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala except Allah will grant him or her their requests. So on the day of Jummah, make frequent dua throughout the day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us when it is raining, it's an opportunity for you to make dua. When you are in sajda, du'a is not only when you lift your hands, but when you are in sajda, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that the closest servant of Allah can be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is in sajda. It's the most humbling position. And when you are in sajda, outside of salah, you cry to Allah and say, Oh Allah, here am I prostrating to you, begging you, crying to you for what I need. I need your forgiveness, I need your mercy. And ask Allah for all your needs of the dunya and the akhirah. But when you are in sajda, cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also told us that make dua for each other. Because when you make dua for your brother or your sister in their absence, they are not aware of it. But you remember your brothers and sisters and you make a special dua for them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the angels say, Ameen, walaka bi mithli dalik, and for you the same. So don't lose that opportunity to make dua for your brothers and sisters. Make dua for your brothers and sisters to become wealthy, to become healthy, to be guided. And when you make dua for them, the angels make dua for you. They say for you the same. So make dua for your brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, let us make sure that we cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him for our needs. Ask Him for health. Ask Him for wealth. Ask Him for protection from all sickness. Ask him for this ummah. Beg Allah for your parents. Beg Allah for your children. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the dua of parents, of a father, of a traveler, of someone who has been wronged will never be rejected. The dua of children for their parents will not be rejected. The duas for your brothers and sisters in their absence will not be rejected. 
So in this special month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, as we engage in good actions, in zakah, in charity, in extra prayer, in recitation of Quran, in fasting, in being humble, in being kind to others, let us beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our good deeds, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help, for his protection, for his mercy and his guidance. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the ability to always ask him because asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ability to just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of Allah's greatest blessing upon us that we can ask him, that we can acknowledge that he is our creator, he is our master, and he is the one who can help and assist us and assist us. ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خيرا our dear uh, Sheikh Nazim Habibullah uh, thank you so much for sharing those words of wisdom and guidance for us so that we may be able to put it into practice uh, for everyone uh, listening out there um, we have heard tonight about the power of du'a, about how some of uh, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used du'a to help them in whatever situation they're in. And that we will remember that our du'a at times of ease and at times of difficulty, we, we make du'a in both situations. The times of the day that du'a can be made, what are the best times of the day? Inshallah, we can all learn from these things and be able to apply it in our lives. We are in, in current day today, we are at times of difficulty. And let us, as we are making dua right now for ourselves and for our family and for our friends and for our brothers and for our sisters, let us also remember to make dua at times of ease and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for us and he will help us uh, get out of this uh, situation that we're in. I want to end by just uh, saying, uh, do not forget to make dua for our brother Nazim and his family for sharing his knowledge and his time uh, with us tonight. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to reward him and help him uh, continue to be of service to his community. Remember him in your dua. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, we'll close tonight I would just like to remind you to tune in every Saturday night in the month of Ramadan at 9 p.m. Uh, for other guest speakers. We'll also have some live sessions on Thursdays at 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, that's 6 p.m. Eastern, inshallah. We look forward to having you join us then and on Saturday nights, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank <laughs> you.